Hi, this is Nate from High Touch. Today, we're going to be walking through a quick start we have published on Snowflake about how you can use Snowflake and High Touch together to create a composable CDP. What this means is that marketers are going to be able to use Snowflake and all of their data to power their efforts. So pretty specifically today, we're going to be setting up a Snowflake workspace and joining that to a new High Touch workspace. We'll build some audiences in High Touch and actually send those audiences to Facebook as one of the examples of many places you could use audiences um, in different campaigns. We'll then go on to actually set up split tests so you can see how you can test audiences between different destinations. Finally, we'll show you how you can analyze the results of your campaigns directly in High Touch, closing the loop from audience building and campaign planning all the way through analytics. Without further ado, let's dive in. I'll start by going through the pre-work to create a high touch workspace. I'm already logged into Snowflake, so my first step here is going to be to add high touch through Partner Connect. I'll go down to Data Products and Partner Connect. I'll then search for high touch. Here we can see what's going to be created um, when I go ahead and click Connect. I'll go ahead and do that now. This will take just a moment. Great. So now we've created an account. Um, clicking activate is going to take me to High Touch's website to get all logged in. I'm going to agree to these terms. And now I'm going to create a new workspace. Um, for now, I'm just going to name this um, Nate Quick Start. Excellent. All right. And this is now connected to my Snowflake instance, and I'm all set with my initial setup with High Touch. Next, I'm going to load the sample data I need for this quick start. Here's the file that you'll need to download to get the sample data. It's a SQL file. Once you've done that, we're going to go ahead in Snowflake. We're going to click into Projects and Worksheets. We're going to go ahead and choose from this menu to create a new worksheet from a SQL file. We'll upload the SQL file. And then we're going to choose to run all. And with this done, now I can go and confirm that I actually have this data in my Snowflake. So I'm going to go ahead and actually go over to my data. Um, if I go into my public information, and I go into my tables, you can see I've added an events table and a user table. And if I click into preview, I can see that there is actually data now populated. So I have my sample data all set up that I need to work through this quick start. Next, we're going to go ahead and set up a destination um, that we're going to send our data to. In this case, we're going to set up a Facebook um, destination for Facebook custom audiences. So over in High Touch, I can go over to my Integrations tab to see my integrations. You can actually see that I've already got my Snowflake source set up. This happened when we did our initial setup from Partner Connect automatically. Over in Destinations, I'm going to select Add Destination. And now I can search from over 200 different destinations that High Touch supports. But for now, let's just do Facebook Custom Audiences. Um, here, you would have to log in with your Facebook account. That's the easiest way. Um, or use a user token um, to get set up. I'm actually going to come back in just a moment. I'm going to do this off screen. All right. And just like that, you can see I have set up a Facebook destination um, using my own credentials here. So we're all set to move on to the next step. Next, we'll be creating a schema in High Touch. What this is going to allow us to do is to reference our underlying data in Snowflake. And from that point forward, um, any marketer or other user of High Touch will be able to sort of access this data really simply in like a code free audience builder. Um, so by the end of this process, we'll set up this schema, this sort of one time setup to connect the correct tables in High Touch. So the very first step of creating a schema is creating a parent model, sort of the main users table. Um, so we're going to go ahead into High Touch, and I'm in Customer Studio, and I'm going to click down to Schema. I choose 
create parent model. And you can see already also my already connected to the Snowflake database that I set up when I went through the Partner Connect. All right, um, there are a few different ways we can choose how to connect um, the schema. I could like write a SQL query if I know the specific columns and fields I want, or if I want to join multiple tables. In this case, I'm just going to use this table selector since this data set has really clean user data. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select the public users table. And if I preview results, I can get a sense of the data that's in this table. Um, so as you would expect, there's a user ID. We have first name, last name, email, gender, birthday, city, state, phone. Pretty classic user information available in this sample data set. Um, I'll go ahead and click continue. I'm going to name my uh, model here. I'll just name this users. I could enter a description for now. I'm going to skip that. Um, column suggestions um, will be on. For a primary key, um, this is like what we're going to index this schema on. User ID is a perfect opportunity or thing to use for this. Um, for the primary label, I'm going to go ahead and select first name. Um, and for the secondary label, I'm going to select email. So this is going to help me later on. If I ever preview results from this, I'll say like, hey, first name, email, or what would be previewed as the results from this. I'll go ahead and click Create Parent Model, and boom, I've completed this first step of the schema setup. All right, now I'm going to go forward to continue making the rest of my schema in Customer Studio. I've got this parent model of users, which is already sufficient to start building audiences with. Um, but I'm going to want to start to use other events, perhaps, in um, audience creation. Maybe I want to look at page view events or other user behaviors. Um, so what we're going to be doing in this step, ultimately, we'll be adding multiple other event models that will connect to this parent user model. So by the end of this step, we're going to have a schema where, in addition to our user's parent model, we'll have linked in user behaviors for purchase events, for adding items to their cart, and for viewing products. All right, so let's dive in. I've got my parent model here, and I'm going to go ahead and click this plus sign um, to create a related event, so adding in actions that this user has taken. Um, again, there are multiple ways I could choose an event model. While there is an events table, I want to actually be pretty specific about what event I add. I don't want to just add all of my events in this one related model. Um, so in this case, I'm actually going to go ahead and use a SQL query to define a specific event. Um, let's start by making a events table for um, product views. So I'm going to go ahead and do select if I can type star um, from public.events where event type is product viewed. I can preview these results to make sure it's looking like I would expect. And it's not. Um, oh, classic. Yep, let me just clean that up. All right, take two. Cool. So if I look here, I can see users, what product was viewed, all my event types are product viewed. So I successfully, you know, filtered down to just this one event type. I have timestamp, quantity price. Cool. Lots of helpful information that I could work with here in an audience building scenario. Click continue. I'm going to name this uh, viewed product. Timestamp column. So how do I know like what events happened when? The timestamp column is named that way. Um, the relationship here is, also I'll go ahead and turn on column suggestions. Um, the relationship here um, is saying like, hey, how do users relate to viewed product? Um, more often than not with event models, one to many makes sense. So one user could view many products. Your other options are one to one. If for some reason this type of an event, each user can only take this event once or many to one. Um, Again, less common, specifically with events, this makes a ton of sense. One user could view many products. Um, and then as far as the columns we're going to join on, we're going to join the user's ID from the user table with the column user ID in the events table. Um, we could toggle on multiple join keys if there were other columns we wanted to match. But in this case, this is going to be a perfect match with this data set. I click Create Event. 
Great, now I've added my viewed product event. I'm gonna do the same thing for a couple of other user behaviors. So you'll get to see this just a little bit more, creating another related event. We're gonna do a SQL query. I'm gonna do select star from public events where, and this time let's make this a add to cart um, event. So where event type preview, make sure I haven't botched it. Beautiful. I can see my users, the events for add to cart, all the data looks right. Go ahead and name this add to cart. Turn on column suggestions. We're still on a one to many user relationship. And again, we're joining user ID to user ID. Finally, let's go ahead and create one more event for purchases. SQL query, select star from public events, where event type equals purchase. Did I do that right? Let's see. Beautiful. Got my purchases here. We'll name this purchase. Um, turn on column suggestions. Users are one to many with purchases. I'm joining ID to ID. There we go. And that's my one time setup to get my schema in place. So from now on, I never need to do this. High Touch um, can access these Snowflake tables and use this data whenever I need it for my marketing teams or other users. All right, now that our data is all set up and connected, we're gonna go ahead and show how marketers or other maybe less technical users could build audiences with that data. Um, so within High Touch, I'm now gonna go over to audiences. Haven't created an audience yet, this is our first one. We'll add an audience and we're going to use that user's parent model that we just set up. Now I have a whole bunch of options for what I could filter this audience on. So I could filter on properties from that users table. We haven't done any related models, so there's nothing here yet. Similarly, there are other audiences or custom traits we've added, but we did add a whole bunch of events when we were doing our schema setup as well. So I could make an audience using my existing user properties or those events. Let's go ahead and make an audience based on this purchase property. Um, so right now this audience would include anybody who's done at least one purchase. I can further refine this audience. Um, so let's go ahead and maybe change the time window and say, Hey, these are people who made a purchase within the last 365 days. Um, I could calculate the size of this audience, sort of get a sense of who's in this, how it's looking. So quite a few users who would be in this audience if we built it as is. If I click show insights, I can dig a little bit deeper and make sure I feel comfortable. So here you can see that name and email that we set up as our sort of preview fields when we set up our user schema. Um, if we look at users, there are also overlap charts where if we had different audiences, we could compare this to different audiences, see if they share users, if they don't share users. Um, we can also break it down a couple of different ways. So we could break it down, for example, by state. Um, to see where what states are sort of most common for users here and look at this a couple of different ways. Um, you can break this down by any column that's in your data model here. So once you feel comfortable with this audience, you feel like you've got the right people in it, um, you don't need to add additional filters or additional logic, you'll click continue and you'll name it. I'm going to name this, I don't know, purchases in the last three to five days. You could add a description or add a folder if you wanted to or labels, but for now, this will do. And I will go ahead and finish creating this audience. Great, this audience is now set up. And if I go to my audience's view, I can see this is my first audience that I've built. Now that we've got an audience, we're going to be actually sending it to um, our downstream destinations. In this case, we've already set up our Facebook destination. So we're gonna push this audience um, using High Touch from Snowflake into Facebook. Um, 
before I actually do that, you'll see if we follow these steps, we'll set up this sync sort of one time and go through this configuration just so you can see how it's done if you were to follow these steps. Um, ultimately, we're actually going to use this same sync multiple times throughout the rest of this quick start, though, um, later on in our splits setup. So I'm actually going to skip creating this sync manually right now. Instead, I'm going to go through the same process, but instead create a sync template. So it's a one time setup. And then in the future, when I want to use this sync, I'll be able to just like click a checkbox and use it really easily. So this step, creating a sync template, we're going to go through. Um, we're going to do it first before we create a sync. The process is exactly the same either way. It's just going to allow us to sort of save our work and reuse this sync template over and over again. So the sync template, because it's sort of this one time setup thing, it's over in our schema tab is where we're going to go ahead and do this. So from our schemas tab, I'm going to head, go ahead and click into settings to create a new sync template, which again, I can use over and over again. I'm going to be syncing customers from my users um, source to my Facebook custom audiences destination that we previously set up. Um, let's review the settings we're going to want to set here. Um, so we are going to create a new Facebook audience. We're not updating existing audience in this case. Um, we have the option to set a new name for this Facebook audience. That said, um, high touch will call it users if, if we don't. Um, right now, I'm, I'm fine with this default naming convention. Um, now we're going to choose what columns we're going to sync over to Facebook. Um, so we'll go ahead and connect the email field from our users table to Facebook's email field. Let's see, there's a suggest mappings. Is this going to help us out? Okay. We got phone, um, already connected. Let's see what other fields we can add. So I have, how about first name? Is there a first name here? Great. Let's add last name and add last name here. Um, we can do city and state as well. Let's do uh, city, city, state, state. What this is allowing us to do is basically find as many possible fields in our data set that could help match to the customer base in Facebook. Whenever you're syncing data into like an advertising walled garden, having more fields available increases the likelihood that you're going to successfully find this customer. For different destinations, again, this flexible field mapping can be really helpful. For example, let's say you have a CRM like Salesforce or Adio. You can choose which fields from um, your source database you want to update um, into your CRM. Um, so you could choose, hey, I want to update email and phone number in my CRM um, and choose exactly how that maps out. Um, all right, we're going to go ahead, move forward. Um, for now, I'm going to skip these additional configuration fields. I'm fine with my default options, but there's plenty more you could read about how you can modify these. Um, I'm going to name this uh, Snowflake to Facebook. And how often I want to send this sync with this template, I'm going to choose to send this um, every hour. Um, so every one hour. Great. Now I've made my sync template. Um, so now I'll actually show you how easy it is. Once I do this one time setup, I don't ever have to do those steps again. So I've got my audience over here uh, that we previously made my purchases in the last 365 days. Um, I don't I haven't added any syncs for this audience yet. I click add sync and that sync templates right there. So if I clicked plus, I would have the manual process. I could manually configure this sync, get the exact settings I want for this sync or choose a different destination besides Facebook if I had added it. But this has the settings I need. I click add sync and boom, it's done. So doing that one time setup for sync templates can save your teams a lot of work if there's syncs they're going to be adding over and over again. You can do more than just build audiences with High Touch and Snowflake. A really common thing we see teams doing is actually running split tests. This allows teams to understand incrementality, right? Um, what destinations for their audiences perform better or what's the impact of sending an audience to a destination at all versus not sending it. Um, so as we go through this step of the quick start, we're actually going to create a brand new audience to run a split test with. 
Um, and by the end of this step, we'll actually set up a split test with this audience where we'll hold out 20% of the audience to not send and the remaining 80% we will send to our Facebook destination. All right, so let's dive in. We're actually gonna go ahead for this um, split test and create a new additional audience. Again, we'll start with our users model. Um, and this time, let's make an audience of people who abandoned an item in their cart. So we're again starting with an event. This time we're going with the add to cart event. And we're gonna go for people who've added something to their cart. Um, this time, let's say, let's limit it a little bit, right? We don't want something that's super stale. So let's say they added an item to their cart within the last 30 days. Um, right now, this is gonna capture people who successfully purchased after adding it to the cart, as well as who didn't successfully purchase. And I right now only care about the people who didn't purchase. These are the people who I'm going to want to retarget. So I'm gonna add another filter. Um, so then, where they did not perform a purchase. Um, so now it's people who added to a cart within the last 30 days and they didn't purchase. And let's limit that even a little bit more, maybe within seven days of adding an item to their cart. So I have a great audience now of people who added things to their cart, didn't purchase. Let's take a quick look at the size, get a sense of how big this is. Um, right now that's zero folks. Okay. We're going to want a bigger audience than that. I realize the issue I've had here. Um, the data set here has a static date range in it and that static date range is more than 30 days ago. So in theory, this would be a great data set. If I wanted, if I had a rolling data set and real customers coming in with the static data set, it's not great. So I'm just going to remove that 30 day criteria. So now this will be anybody who ever added to their cart, um, and then didn't purchase within seven days. So now I should have users in this audience. Beautiful, plenty of users who fit this criteria. And again, in real life, you probably would have some sort of filter on here um, to make sure you're only capturing recent add to cart users. I can do a lot to again, validate my audience. I could look at the members in it, make sure it seems like the right list of members. Now that I have multiple audiences, I could compare this to my other audiences and see what the overlap is. Um, so I can see you know, how many folks are in this audience versus in my purchases in the last year audience. Um, and again, I could break this down further as well. For now, I'll go ahead and continue, and I'm going to name this audience um, Cart Abandoners. And now I have this new audience. So this is the audience I'm going to want to go ahead and set up a split test with. So I'm going to enable split groups with this audience. And by default, right away, we have a holdout group that gets set up for Snowflake. I would actually have to turn on logging in my Snowflake settings. I won't do that this exact moment for this to get ridden back to my Snowflake environment, but pretty easy step to handle there. And now I'm going to want to go ahead and um, choose to send my remaining 80% of users to a treatment. I haven't added any syncs yet, so right now this is empty. So what I need to actually do is go ahead over to syncs. I'm going to click add sync. Again, I get to use that handy Snowflake to Facebook sync template. Now that um, Facebook audience is set up. And so now when I go back to enable split groups, you can see I have Facebook custom audiences that auto populated here. If I had multiple destinations, I could easily add additional groups, send different audiences to different groups and test those groups against each other. But for now, I'm gonna save these changes. Great, and so now from this point forward, um, I'll be sending 80% of this audience to Facebook. The remaining 20% I'll be holding back um, and not sending to Facebook. And later on, I can analyze and see, hey, of the people who I sent to Facebook, do they actually wind up completing more purchases than the people who I didn't? All right, the last major step of this quick start, we're gonna show how you can use High Touch to analyze um, performance data and other marketing data that exists in Snowflake. Um, and sort of close that loop between the actions you're taking when you're building audiences and sending them destinations and the actual performance you're getting from those actions. So I'm gonna go ahead and click into the intelligence tab in high touch and I can start creating charts right away. So let's say I wanna see a chart um, using purchases. And if you recall, actually, before we even dive in, these are the metrics, the events we added um, in our schema setup. So this relies on the same schema that we set up for marketers to build audiences with. 
So I'm now looking at um, results for all purchases. This is going to default to the last seven days. And as we talked about earlier, this data set is actually um, older than that. So let me see if I put this back to 90 days, if that's going to get me some data. If not, I'll do a custom range. Nope, we need a custom range. Um, let's just say um, January 1st, 2024 until 9-15-2024. Beautiful. I have data um, up until the point when this data set um, stops having new data. So here I can see um, purchase data just over time for this time range. Um, and let me just clean this up. Actually, I'll just lower the end date to June 9th so we don't see quite as much just blank space there. All right, here are all the purchases I've had. Um, I can really easily segment this data. So for example, let's group it by um, some of our event properties. So maybe we can group purchases by category. Um, so obviously lots of overlap on this time view, but I can, I can zoom into different lines. So here are my purchases where the category is shirts versus pants um, versus socks. Um, so yeah, pretty easy to dive into your data, group it by different things. We could change our attribution methods. We could filter to certain users or um, dive in deeper. For now, though, I'm actually going to flip to a different type of chart. So performance, these are line charts. We can view trends over time for data. Let's actually flip over to a funnel view of this data. So we'll start brand new. This is going to allow us to create a step-by-step -step funnel. For us, this is pretty easy. We have a e-commerce cart checkout process here. So a pretty logical funnel is to see folks who viewed a product, and then see maybe if they added a product to their cart, and then maybe if they purchased. Um, this conversion criteria, this conversion window, is how quickly they must have done it after each step after the other. So basically, if they don't add to cart within a day after viewing the product, it wouldn't count. So let me make this a little bit more generous, maybe let's say seven days. Um, and similarly, I could segment this different ways. I could do different group buys. But for now, I can just see all of my users who view products and then, hey, within seven days, 2% of the people or 2.8% of the people who view products add them to their cart, and we get down to 0.99%. And here's the raw data to purchase. Um, what's really cool here is I can click into any part of this chart and actually immediately turn this into action. So let's say I want to create a campaign for people who viewed the product but didn't add it to their cart. I click Create Audience. And now automatically I've applied these filters um, to create a cart abandoned audience. So I could save this audience, send it to my downstream destinations, do split tests, do all this other interesting stuff we were have done, um, but really quickly go from this mode of like analyzing data, finding insights to being like, okay, here's a segment of customers I'm interested in. I want to act on this segment of customers. All right, folks, that's it. So as you can see, it really just takes a couple of minutes to turn Snowflake into an engine that can power your marketing by using HiTouch's composable CDP. If you have any questions, of course, we'd love to help out. Um, you can find my contact information in the description here. Um, otherwise, I hope you all have a good day and uh, enjoy putting your data to work uh, to drive some results for your business. Take care, y'all.